Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24. Today, I'm not only going to tell you whether or not you can still use really old Super 8 sound film, but I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you the results of my testing with this old roll of K40 sound film. So I've gotten the question quite a few times over the last few years, Mike, can you still use old Super 8 sound film today? To well, not specifically today, but in the modern day. The answer is a little more difficult than just yes or no. Uh, for the most part, well, you'll see in a few minutes. A lot of it depends on the actual role of Super 8 sound film that you're trying to get sound from, and picture for that matter. Older sound films, see sound film came out in the 70s and it was discontinued widely in 1997. So the later stuff will say, yeah, maybe. The older stuff will still say, yeah, maybe, but it can be a little more hit and miss. So we, we discussed this actual topic in a little bit of detail last Sunday on my last Sunday live stream. And if you're not familiar, pop by. Every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, Easter, 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 Eastern time, uh, I do a live stream. We just do about an hour, a little over an hour of fun film chat. We just throw questions out there and show some films and do all kinds of things. Pop in if you can. Pop in. If we're going to cancel it, I let you know in my community tab. So moving on. So I've, I've experimented with sound film. Well, I used to shoot a lot of it in the 80s and 90s. And I, and, I, and I had good luck with it because it was brand new and it was fresh and the cameras were relatively new. But I've experimented with old sound film in the recent years and I've not had a whole lot of luck with it. I will, I will say that the last experiments that I did, I used uh, Ektachrome 160 sound film and I got really nothing out of it. I got more just... I guess noise and crackling and popping like Rice Krispies, then I got anything else. Now, suffice it to say, the, the images were pretty poor as well, so maybe it was just that roll of film or those rolls of film. I don't know. Maybe it was a camera. Probably not. So I decided on this go-around to try something a little different. This is Kodachrome. Now, as most of you probably know, or maybe you don't, Kodachrome is a color film, was originally a color film, it's actually a black and white film, but it's marketed as a color film that can no longer be processed in color as of this video recording. And that's because the color process used something way different than we use in modern color, color processing. It was a very lengthy and in-depth uh, technical process that added color couplers into the processing chemicals uh, in order to produce the colors and there was re-exposure of the layers so it was a very long drawn out process so we use this as black and white film for all intents and purposes nowadays and that's exactly what I did here so I found the newest newest Kodachrome K40 sound film that I possibly could and it's it was right here in my own little storage space this particular roll has a process before date of 11, 1996, so November of 1996. Now remember, they discontinued sound film in 1997. This particular roll was manufactured in 1994, and I know that because I found an edge code on here, and that edge code was a, whoa, <laughs> that edge code was a plus, a circle, and a triangle, and that denotes a manufacture date of 1994. It's the most recent role, the most or the 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 newest role of sound film that I had personally. So that was the one I used to test. Now I shot the role, I should say my wife shot the role of me right there in the backyard and I used a microphone that I didn't bring up here, so let me grab it. Here it is right here. So this is the uh this is the microphone that I used, just a very cheapo old school 80s model Bell & Howell handheld microphone. Nothing to it. With a little 3.5 millimeter plug, I tried the microphone that comes with the Canon 1014 XLS. 
I couldn't get that one to work. Oh, reliable. I mean, wired mic, phantom power. I don't know. So back to the camera. Well, to the camera. This is the camera that I used. Probably the most technically advanced Super 8 camera ever made. And I believe it was manufactured right around 1980. This is the Canon 1014 XLS. Now I have several sound movie, Super 8 movie cameras. I have three of these, but I have uh, some others, but I figured if I'm gonna do a sound test, let's go all out, let's use one of these wicked bad boys. So that's what I did. I had a wired headphone that we, that we tested everything and we could hear audio coming through the mic when we depressed the trigger and, and rolled film and whatnot. So I, was, I had high hopes, high hopes. So back to the film, we used this roll of film. I processed it, I did have to do a snip test because as you may or may not know with Kodachrome, no two Kodachromes are gonna develop the same. You, you develop in them a black and white now. I use HC110 formula, uh, developer. And my testing told me that this particular roll should be processed at 67 degrees Fahrenheit for six minutes. That's what I did. Now this has rim jet on it, that nasty black layer on the base that you gotta get it off. Most of it came off in my first step, which is unusual for old Kodachrome. See, this is 30 years old. Even this new roll is 30 years old, but it all came off because it's actually a relatively new stock for Kodachrome. Anyway, so we took it, the uh, camera, the film, me, my wife, right into the backyard. I was a goofball. Uh, I did a little stand in front of the camera, a talking head kind of goofy, goofy, really ridiculously goofy thing that you're gonna see here in just a second. Now, I understand there are some vertical scratches. That came from my projector. You see, you have to extract the audio from this with a projector. That's the only way I can do it. I scan the film in my Movie Stuff Retro Scan 4K unit. I extracted the audio with my Elmo projector and my movie stuff retro sync sound module, marry them together so that they are in perfect synchronicity, and this is what we end up with. Here's what I got. Okay, 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 thank you for joining me. I'm uh, Marcus McGruberson right here live with WFB24, uh, and welcome to the weather. Right now I am in, uh, well, Springdale, Florida, and uh, the weather, well, it's, uh, it's not raining. I can uh, I can see the sky. There's birds. There's a few leaves on the ground. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit windy. I don't know if you can you can see the leaves. They're falling. There's some wind and uh, well, that's that's the weather. So yeah, I'm back. Uh, I got a little bit more information for you. Uh, I figured it was probably going to rain cats and dogs so I got mine to, to uh, you know a little protection and now I uh, I don't think it's gonna rain so we're gonna let her go and we're gonna we're gonna pop right into sports so so for there's for sports today we got uh, well uh, somebody hit a golf ball right into uh, to the water we know that for sure because we witnessed it live right here on WFB 24 uh, your, your number one source for news and weather and sports. And let's take it back to, uh, well, to me, something different. So I'm back with, uh, well, we got, uh, we got regular news now. Just local stuff, you know, right here in Spring Palmdale, -ish, Florida. So, so in local uh, news, uh, some people, a uh, few people died. Not really here, but some people died. Uh, uh, there was a few fights. Somebody lost a cat, and uh, you know that's the news. Make sure you tune in, all of you, for your local news right here. We got it first. Investigative news, the best news, the the the, the only news. I'm Flannon McGill Condy, and uh, this has uh, been my show right here on uh, WFB24. Uh, check me out. I told you it was goofy. I did. I already told you it was goofy. There's no question 
that you can still use old sound film. In fact, not only did we get relatively good audio, uh, I, I did peak it a couple of times. I hit the highs uh, a couple of times. But the, the picture came out pretty good. Actually, way better than I had anticipated. So as a black and white stock, I was pretty happy with this for a 30-year-old Remjet infected Kodachrome. <laughs> pretty content overall with the, uh, with the film itself. The, like I say, the horizontal... I'm sorry, the vertical scratches on the right side and they kind of show up more prevalent towards the end of the film. That all happened through my projector. So what I did is I scanned the film first and my first scan came out really good. I just had it a tiny bit out of focus, the scanner. So I didn't realize that until after I had extracted the audio. I put it back in the scanner and that's when I realized, well... We have an issue. It's not my scanner scratching it because my scanner, the movie stuff scanners are very gentle on film. They only touch the edge of the film. It's not the scanner. It's definitely happened in my projector. So I will need to work on that a little bit and see if I can sort that out because I can't have that. Can't shoot sound film and scratch it all up. So like I say, it's not perfect. There is some peaking in the audio levels a couple of times. Um, it even cuts out a little bit. Now, I don't know if that has to, uh, more to do with the connection to the camera you know, the mic to the camera, or if it was just bad spots in the magnetic sound, uh, on the uh, magnetic track on the film, or, or whatnot. I don't know what the issue was, but there were a couple of areas where our, we lost our sound just a little bit. Speaking of that, really quick, if you're not familiar, they do not make sound-striped Super 8 film any longer. And what they did is they actually glued or adhered a magnetic stripe opposite the sprocket holes on Super 8 film. That was where you recorded your audio. That's where your camera could pick up uh, and record audio from your microphone. They then laid also a smaller, much thinner magnetic track on the outside of the perforations, and that's called a balance stripe. And what that balance stripe does is allow you to roll up your film all the way up, because they made these in 200 foot lengths too, the sound film. And your film wasn't lopsided because it would be thicker on one side of your film. So to balance that out, they added another stripe. Well, as luck would have it, there's a lot of projectors that can re-record over both stripes, the balance stripe included. My Elmo will do that. Now, I haven't really done a whole lot with that uh, in, recent, in recent times in the modern era. But I do want to doodle with that as well. And you could, you could do voiceovers or narration, stuff like that, which is kind of cool. Without ruining your film's original soundtrack. Pretty cool. So uh, I shot this at 24 frames per second. I don't know if I mentioned that. I did meter this film uh, at about 16, ISO 16. Uh, knowing that it was about 30 years old, I figured I'd be safe there. And I was. That basically meant shooting at f2.8 with this camera. I put it in manual exposure. And like I say, I did not use a filter. The filter only takes away about a half, a quarter to a half a stop. So I left the filter disengaged, the 85 filter. And I'm happy with the results. I, I, I honestly don't know what happened the first couple of go-arounds. It had to have been that Ektachrome 160. That was the problem. I do have another roll of this that I hopefully will be shooting soon-ish, at least this year. That's soon-ish for me. Uh, and see what we can get out of that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little something about sound film. If you did, you can tell me. You can tell me. Well, you can show me by... You ready? Mm-hmm. Just... Where is it? It's right there. Right there. Just hit the little thumb, it, the, the button's down there, but if you would just tap it, it, it helps me a little. It helps the YouTube deal situation. And if you want, right there, that's uh, right there. I sound like my news guy in the backyard. Right there, just, uh, you know, subscribe. That's all you got to do. I, I don't know. And until the very next time that I see all of your gorgeous, gorgeous faces, there's the one that... A little too quick. I'll see all of you on the very next go around.